Welcome to uh, part two of our Won't You Be My Neighbor Bible Study series. And uh, Pastor Bo has entitled this one, Watch Your Mouth. Hey, now, watch your mouth. <laughs> now, I love uh, this verse, Psalm 1914, uh, because growing up in the Methodist church, um, our benediction would always be this. But it says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. And I love that verse because it reminds us that um, what we think about, what we put in, it will affect what comes out. And our desire is that what comes out mm. would be pleasing to God. Yeah, I love that. And that's kind of what this whole uh, study is about today, where how can we let God's love guide our words, mm. guide our thoughts, and uh, Luke 6, another great verse, uh, verses 31 and then 45 uh, from chapter 6, the golden rule. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. And then 45, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Mm -hmm. What you say flows from what is in your heart. And uh, of course, what is in your heart as believers we have the blessing of having the Holy Spirit in our heart. And, uh, and so by through His power and through His changing us and working in us, we can let good things flow out of our heart. And I think one of the things I like about this verse is it reminds us that uh, there's an action that we need to take. It's not just proactive. Sometimes uh, re it's not just reactive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think, oh, okay, well, somebody says something mean to me, I'll just try to react in a good way. Well, we should do to others as we would like them to do to us when we react, but also do to others as you would like them to do to you. Mm -hmm. How can we be proactive and say words that are helpful and positive and encouraging? And, uh, and how can we produce good things and let good things flow from what is in our hearts? Um, it says here, how to make friends and make a difference with my mouth. So we can make a difference in our world around us with the things that we say. And point number one says, shut my mouth and listen. James 1.19 says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, mm. and slow to anger. Now here's what we're going to do. For 10 seconds, we're just going to listen. That's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> we just listen to nothing. But you know what's even harder is listening to others sometimes, sometimes. and yet it's so important. Um, I think when we just keep talking and talking and talking, we're saying, my ideas are more important than your ideas. Uh, I value everything about what I have to say and think and my opinions more than I value yours. But sometimes when someone is hurting, um, that first step towards healing is just somebody mm. listening. You, they, yeah. you don't necessarily have to give advice, yeah. but just to listen. Yeah. And that will set someone on the road towards healing just because they know that someone was willing to stop and care about their what they're going through. But that other part there about being slow to anger, whew, man, I, I know anger is one of the things I struggle with. And uh, and that that's tough to... to um, and, and being able to do that sometimes is just uh, what he says, to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Not say the hurtful thing that wants to come out of your mouth. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and I like, you know, slow to get angry. There are some things that, that should make us angry, yeah. but we don't want to get into, uh, again, that reactive anger that's damaging and hurtful, but more, let me think about why this is making me angry and how do I deal with it in the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And then number two, uh, stop criticizing and judging others. Luke 6, 37, Jesus says it, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. And uh, isn't it interesting when we experience God's grace, we experience God's forgiveness, mm -hmm. we are no longer under judgment because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, how all of a sudden... You know what? I guess I shouldn't be judging anybody right. either. I guess right. I should be forgiving other people. 
Yeah, getting that revelation has definitely enabled me to show people more grace and show them more mercy in times where sometimes I may feel like they don't deserve it, but because I know what God has brought me through, I know how many times he has forgiven me yeah. and delivered me, then I'm, I try to be um, one that's not criti- overly critical and judging of others for that very reason. Amen to that. And that ties in with number five. So we'll get, I, I have another thought on that when we get back down to number five as yeah. well. But that's a, that's a great point. Stop criticizing and judging others. Yeah. And number three says, get rid of gossip. Oof. That's a tough one for, for a lot of us. But Proverbs sixteen twenty eight says, a troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Yeah. Would you guys say, Neil and Lee, if you think about the conflict that we have, even right here at church, on staff, when things go wrong, it's usually really not about lying, it's not about murder, it's not about, uh, you know, stealing. It's almost always the result of gossip yeah. and irresponsible use of words and, and so forth. Yeah. It creates a lot of problems. Yeah. The truth is, if you don't know the facts, then you should keep your mouth shut. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, how do you keep your mouth shut? Shut. How do you not gossip? Well, we talked about being proactive and making choices to use good words mm-hmm. and use our language for good. Uh, number four, smile. I love this point. Uh, Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. A trouble. Whoops. I'm sorry. I'm re- reading the wrong verse. Proverbs fifteen thirteen. A glad heart makes a happy face. Yeah. 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 There are definitely people that I see that always smile and they just bring joy. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you can't, you can be having the worst day ever. And when they walk in with that smile, it yeah. just, it just lifts you up. And uh, that's what we should strive to be. It can sound sort of trivial or trite, you know, oh, just go out and smile. And, but there is a power in just being pleasant and agreeable and trying to make a pleasant connection with, with folks, whether you know them or not. Yeah. Um, it can change somebody's day, and that can lead to changing their life. Yeah. So, uh, Number five, speak truth in love. And uh, as I said, this sort of ties in with number two about stop criticizing and judging others. Speaking truth in love. Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer one another. Yeah. Um, speaking the truth in love. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard sometimes because you don't want to hurt um, but sometimes with bro- when brothers or sisters may be struggling, you need to speak the truth so that they can be set on a path towards restoration. Yeah. And relationship. You talk about brothers and sisters. I think the key to this is relationship. That gives us the freedom to speak truth um, in love. And I think a lot of times we see Christians just kind of bashing people with truth or I'm going to get on social right. media and... Truth is very important. We've got to be all about the truth. But there's also a way to present the truth, a time to present the truth. There's also a time to just listen to somebody who maybe isn't speaking the truth. But we need to listen to them so we can then talk about truth in love. So truth's important. Bashing people with the truth uh, is not going to be productive but speaking the truth in love is tr- is productive. Yes. And I love point number six here. It says, speak words of life, not death. Proverbs 18, 21. Words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. I love this. You choose, it says. Yeah. We have the choice whether we are speaking words that are building up or words that are tearing down. Yeah. I love it. And it's back to that proactive thing. It's not passive. It's, hey, I'm going to decide today what I'm going to do with my words, yeah. my thoughts, my actions. Um, and that would probably be a great uh, challenge for us here to just kind of go through these things and determine how we can be the leader with our words, with our yeah. thoughts, 
and uh, how we can be the person that brings some change maybe in the workplace, that brings some change maybe in our families, that brings some change maybe in our small group settings, uh, sports teams, whatever it may be. Um, we can lead with the way we choose to watch our mouths. Yep. Um, also, we mentioned earlier where this comes into practical application at church a lot of times is in small groups. So if you're not in a small group, um, we would highly recommend it. That's an opportunity to really listen to others, to uh, really show grace and not judging, to uh, speak truth and love, and uh, all these points on here. So uh, consider uh, getting involved in a small group at Community. It will change your life. 